Hostile powers like China and Russia want our resources, our shipping routes, and to be within striking distance of our continent. We won't let them. The Canadian Navy will soon have a new advanced submarine. The Canadian Patrol Submarine Project, CPSP for short, launched in 2021, aims to replace Canada's aging Victoria-class submarines with up to 12 new, conventionally powered, under-ice-capable submarines to protect its vast coastline across three oceans. With Arctic ice melting, opening new shipping routes and resources, Canada faces growing threats from Russia and China's increased presence. The $60 billion program, part of the 2024 defense policy, Our North Strong and Free, seeks to enhance underwater surveillance and deterrence. We will defend our seas, skies and soil. We will always be the true North Strong and Free. The Victoria class, bought used from the UK in the 1990s, has been unreliable, with frequent breakdowns and limited sea time. The CPSP issued a request for information in 2024 to evaluate designs from allies like Germany, Norway, South Korea, France, Spain, and Sweden, targeting stealth, lethality, and Arctic operations. With a contract planned for 2028 and first delivery by 2035, emphasizing domestic jobs and indigenous participation. By August 2025, Canada shortlisted two bidders, Germany's ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems, TKMS for short, and South Korea's Hanwha Ocean Company Limited, narrowing from six initial contenders. So, which of these two submarines is best suited for Canada? Let's discuss. At the heart of the CPSP are two formidable candidates, each offering distinct advantages tailored to Canada's unique needs. TKMS, partnering with Norway, proposes the Type 212 CD, a two 500-ton diesel-electric submarine with air-independent propulsion fuel cell technology, enabling over three weeks submerged without surfacing. This design, already in production for Germany and Norway, emphasizes Arctic optimization, reinforced sails for ice-breaking, low acoustic signatures, quieter than Canadian snowfall, high automation for a crew of about 30, and relying solely on torpedo tubes without vertical launch systems. It features four 533mm torpedo tubes, carrying 16 to 24 weapons, including the DM-2A5 common heavyweight torpedo with over 50 km range, 25 knot speed, and wire-guided acoustic homing for anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare. Tube launched missiles include the IDIS for defense against helicopters and small vessels, and the Naval Strike Missile, or Joint Strike Missile for anti-ship and land attack roles. Defensive systems include the Sea Spider anti-torpedo torpedo and acoustic or electromagnetic decoys for evasion. Its compact design prioritizes stealth and NATO compatibility, but limits payload capacity. TKMS's century of experience, including exports to over 20 nations, ensures interoperability with NATO allies, vital for joint operations in the North Atlantic and Arctic. The common design with European partners could accelerate delivery, potentially by 2032-2033, while fostering trilateral ties under initiatives like the Rearm Europe Plan. TKMS has opened a Canadian office and pledged industrial offsets, including local maintenance, aligning with Ottawa's sovereignty goals. However, its smaller displacement limits payload for long Pacific transits, and reliance on the German-Norwegian line might strain production if Canada joins late. In contrast, Hanwha Ocean offers the Jangbogo 3 Batch 2 KSS-3, a 3,000-ton platform with lithium-ion batteries and air-independent propulsion, allowing 21-plus days submerged and a 7,000 nautical mile range, ideal for patrolling from Victoria to the Indo-Pacific. Ideal for patrolling from Victoria to the Indo-Pacific. This in-service design for the South Korean Navy includes vertical launch systems for missiles, 
enhancing strike lethality against surface threats, and automation for a 33-person crew. Hanwha Ocean's KSS-3 is a larger than TKMS's 212CD. It features a mix of six 533mm torpedo tubes and 10 KVLS cells. The K761 Tiger Shark Torpedo, 50 km range, 40 knots, 300 kg warhead, handles anti-submarine and anti-surface tasks, complemented by Sea Star 3 torpedoes and submarine-launched mines. The VLS supports the Hyunmu SLBM for strategic land strikes and the Chonryong SLCM for precision land attack, while tube-launched harpoon missiles target ships. Countermeasures include the Sonata Electromagnetic Warfare Suite and acoustic decoys. Hanwha's rapid build capability, promising first delivery in six years post-contract, addresses timeline pressures, backed by partnerships with Canadian firms like CAE, Babcock, and L3 Harris for training and sustainment. Priced at 24 billion Canadian dollars for the fleet, it offers cost efficiencies from an active production line plus NATO-compatible systems proven in Polish deals worth 22 billion US dollars. Selecting Hanwha would diversify Canada's alliances toward the Indo-Pacific, boosting interoperability in exercises like RIMPAC and countering Chinese expansion. Yet, as a newer exporter, it may face scrutiny on long-term support compared to TKMS's established NATO pedigree. The KSS-3's VLS enables greater offensive reach, but may be less stealthy than the Type 212 CD. For the Canadian Patrol Submarine Project, the Type 212 CD excels in covert Arctic NATO operations, while the KSS-3S missile-heavy design suits Pacific deterrence. Both can adapt to Canadian Mark 48 torpedoes, balancing stealth versus firepower for Canada's needs. CPSP vessels will enable covert ISR, anti-submarine warfare and power projection, supporting NATO and allies like the US and UK under AUKUS-inspired PACs. The CPSP is more than procurement, it's a strategic imperative. By 2035, these submarines will safeguard coasts, deter foes, and foster industry, ensuring Canada navigates great power rivalry from strength. As Minister Blair noted, they enable, quote, persistent deterrent on all three coasts, vital in a world where underwater shadows decide security. With TKMS and Hanwha advancing, Ottawa must act decisively to secure this underwater edge.